Well, hello there, folks. How's it going today? Hope everybody's doing really good. We got a Telecaster on the bench here today. Uh, it belongs to my cousin Ben. Uh, this is not a Fender Tele. This is actually an Eric Brown made Tele. Okay, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this guy. I'm not plugging him. I actually had heard the name before, but this guy's name was Eric Brown. And I believe he's still in business. He was in Maine building guitars for quite some time. Puts this little wooden plate over the neck plate. Kind of a nice touch. It's a really beautiful guitar. Uh, it's ash. Uh, it's been stained. And it has a beautiful bird's eye neck on it. Uh, nice guitar all the way around. So, I was doing a little research on... Eric Brown and and uh, checked out the website seems to be still going uh, he's built over a thousand guitars from what they had published and uh, of good quality I mean this is a really nice guitar uh, my cousin bought this in a pawn shop for an amazing price so anyway we're gonna put this assembly in where the old traditional you know, so it'll be like the old traditional style jack. It has the metal plate and kind of a recess thing. And the owner just wants to change it over to the thimble style, you know. So what we gotta do, we are gonna I'm gonna fix these frets for him too before I send it back. I'll I'll slack the strings off and they must just be lifted from probably dried out in the pawn shop or something. I don't know. I'm going to try to tap them down a little bit. And if not, we're going to level them off so it plays nice again. The fret works really nice on it. He does a great job that way. Uh, so first and foremost, I think what we're going to do is take this jack plate off. I want to see how big the hole is inside. And just kind of dry fit everything and make sure that these parts are gonna fit in there, okay? So let's get to that. Okay, so, we get these screws out of here. And I am gonna loosen up the, uh, I gotta loosen this nut up. Maybe I should do that first before we get too far. Okay, so we got that loosened up pretty good. Now so we should be able to get it out of there. Yeah, it's coming now. All right, so uh, I'm gonna loosen the rest of these screws up and get them out of there, and uh, we'll see what we got going here. Yeah, well, I've been working on uh, some of my own guitars in the past few days. I'm sure you guys have noticed. Uh, I did get my Telecaster back together. The red one's all done. I put a maple neck on it. And I got the orange colored first act guitar playing pretty nice too. Uh, the red one, I'm probably going to do some mods to, but I'm going to plug it in here today and just see what it sounds like. And uh, I can possibly shoot a video for you guys. So, all right, what we're going to do is take this plate off. And we'll set that with the screws. Okay, so let's open up our new stuff. Let's see what we got here. These ain't bad. They're like ten bucks for the whole the whole setup. So I'm gonna put the original parts back in the uh, bag that the new ones came in, so I don't lose them. Okay, that's a good habit. So let's just see. This fits in there, and it does. So that'll work out nice. Now, what we're going to have to do is probably plug those holes off. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I have any red stain, but we'll see what we can do and just try to hide them. It's on the bottom of the guitar. You're not really going to see it anyway. But this is what we're going to do, and this is what the owner wants. So not a problem. We'll take great care of that for him. Okay, so I got to get some tools out. I made a tool especially to uh, 
to do this. So what ends up happening is this. You have this piece right here, okay? You can see it's kind of like a U-shape, right? So what, what ends up happening, you somehow need to get that inside the hole and flatten it out. And when you flatten it out, it, it kind of drives the corners into the wood inside, and it stays there. And once it's in there, your jack will go through it, okay? Once the jack goes through it, you'll have your jack bolted to that thing, and then your thimble will just go out through like that, and then you put your nut and washer on, and you're in. Okay, so what I got to do next is I got to take the control plate off so I can access that and I'll dig out my tool here. Uh, don't take that the wrong way. My tool for uh, setting that plate in there, okay? Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is the tool I was talking about. And what this does, and I have videos on how to make this, what what the threaded rod size is, you could have a socket, the whole thing, okay? So, just go back on my videos, and I actually, uh, we got sh three short little videos that kind of show you how this works. So, what's going to happen is this. I'm going to take these nuts off right here. Like this. What we're going to do is put that little U-shaped thing on. That's going to hold that jack. And it just kind of wiggles its way down in there. It's sort of tight, but it's not. It'll go over the threads. I think this is 3 8 all thread, too, by the way. So, basically what you do, I'm going to put two nuts on here, okay? Like this. And you just want to tighten them together. And put all this back down in there. Okay, down in the end. So what we're going to end up doing is this. I'm going to spin this nut a little bit. This is set up uh, at the perfect distance. So when this flattens out, it'll be a certain distance inside the body. Because these don't... They're not flush, they go up inside. So what you end up doing is sticking this whole apparatus in there, okay? And uh, basically what you're going to end up doing is tightening this outside nut, okay? And uh, by doing that, what it's going to do, what you have to do is I have to hold this threaded rod with a pair of vice grips so it doesn't spin when I tighten the nut. And I've got two nuts on the back side, which them will lock together and they shouldn't spin. So as I tighten this up, what it's gonna do, it's gonna squish this thing flat, okay? Once you get it squished flat, you just loosen this back up and then push this in so you can take those two nuts off, pull the whole assembly out and you got it. It works really good, and uh, it's really easy to make. I think that's a 5-8 socket, and I just got some tape on there. And what that does, that just stops it against the outside of the body, so it doesn't scratch the body, and it also sets the distance of where this is going to end up. Okay? Really simple and uh, really effective. So, if everything works out right, put your jack through it, put the thimble on over it, not in a washer, and we're done. Okay, let's let's uh, get set up here. I think we're almost ready to go. I got to get a pair of vice grips out, and we'll put this bad boy in. Okay, folks, so I got my vice grips holding the threaded rod, okay? You know, you I've thought about welding like a T-handle on the end of this, too, just to hold it, but this is decent it works so you want to push this in tight against the body and then just start tightening this nut okay I'm going to take this off the neck stand so it sits a little flatter for me 
And I'm just going to push it up against the, uh, the wall here so I can hold it in there tight and straight. Okay, so we'll just start tightening this. And like I said, the two nuts that are inside should jam together and uh, hold the hold it so it doesn't spin. That's what we're hoping. And it's starting to get tight now. Okay, so basically what you do is you just go until it you can't turn it anymore. And that way you know you got it all the way in there. And it's flat. Okay, I gotta tighten my vice grips up a little bit. Okay. All right, she's getting tight. I can actually hear it crackling in the wood, too, so it's sinking in there. All right, that's as tight as I can go. So we're going to loosen it up. Okay. You can take your vice grips off if, you know, if that's what you're using. Let me pull the guitar back a little bit. All right, so I'm just going to loosen the nut up here. And the main thing is I need to back those two nuts off that are in there, okay? So you loosen this up, and it allows you to push the the bolt through and then you'll finally you're gonna see them two nuts in the control cavity here like this Oop. Uh, I shouldn't have done that I just kind of turned that and there's the two nuts in there okay and uh, all right so what we're gonna do is loosen those up there's one. There's the other one. Okay. Oh, uh, I think there's a washer stuck in there too. Okay, so let me push that out. Yeah. There we go. All right. So, as you can see, it flattened the plate out and it's into the proper depth inside the body. So, now um, what we can do is fish the jack out through there. Uh, Not always easy, but it's doable. Okay. All right, I think we got it right there. So, what we need now is this thimble. Yeah, that's gonna work good. And. We're gonna put the lock washer, I don't know, the tooth washer, I think we'll put probably in the back. Okay, so. Now, you can do this any way you'd like. I've had pretty good experience like this. And then when the two nuts, you know, get tight in between the, the uh, plate we just installed, this tooth washer will, will help bind that nut together so it stays in there good, you know. And 
It won't keep loosening up on you. Okay, so we're going to get that fish back in there somehow. All right. And it's a little tricky lining them up sometimes, but that's not too bad. You can usually do it. All right, I'm just going to get a screwdriver to help kind of guide me through. And oh boy, this one's being a bugger. There we go. Okay. Now I just got to make sure I got enough clearance, which looks like I do. Just trying to get that nut started on there. Which isn't always easy. Hmm. Well. Alright. Okay, after a little bit of wrestling and whatnot, we got it in there. It fits really good. It's at the right depth, so the thimble is nice and tight around the the uh, body. That's the biggest thing with getting that depth set right. So, what we can do now is put this back together. Uh, I think I will spray the pots down and clean them while I got it rid of Pat. It's not a bad idea, so let me find my spray. All right, I'm using Max uh, Electronic Cleaner. You can get this at, like, auto stores and stuff like that. So I'm just going to find the opening on this one. Get a little in there and just work them around. You know, roll them back and forth, try to get that stuff loosened up. And the same with this one. Okay. Yeah. Feels good. I'm going to hit the switch while I'm right there, too. It doesn't hurt a thing, so. Just kind of walk that back and forth a few times. Give another little shot. There we go. This stuff evaporates pretty quick, too, so it's uh, pretty good stuff. All right, let's put this back together. Make sure we're going the right way. Because the wires are only going to allow me to go one way with this, so I'm just going to chase them down in nice. And that looks pretty good right there. As I can tell, a lot of wires gobbed up under the switch, which, and the pickup wires too. Yeah, maybe not a great routing system, but nonetheless, it works, and that goes down in nice. Okay, so let's put the two screws back in it. And we should be pretty good, much good to go. And the next thing, like I said, I'm going to do to this, I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to fix those frets that are high. Uh, he never mentioned anything about it buzzing, but I'm not sure if he's played it lately. But I know that's going to buzz. And it wouldn't hurt just to clean the frets up a little bit. So there you go, Ben. You got your jack in. I'll figure something out with these holes. I'll at least get them plugged up. And uh, we'll look into getting some sort of stain or something just to daub the ends in with. And we're looking pretty good. So I'll put all the rest of the parts, the original ones, back in this bag. And uh, this will go back in the case with the owner. Okay. Well, there's one job tackled. I'm not going to bore you guys with the uh, fret polishing and all that jazz. You've seen me do it enough. Uh, 
it's not really fun to watch or fun to do, but that's just how it is, okay? So anyway, we got that one tackled. Looking pretty good here. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. I hope some of this info helps. Again, go back in my uh, uh, previous videos and I show you how to uh, build your own jig here to install these jack plates. And uh, it's really easy to do and it's, it works really good. And uh, you just see, it's pretty much effortless and you don't need a ton of tools to do it. But if you don't have this tool... You're not getting that in there right. It just won't work. So, like I said, go back and check out my other videos. And I show you all the uh, ins and outs of how to make this. And you'll be able to do it on your own. Okay? That way, if you buy a body or something, you're building a patch caster. You know? Then you can put the traditional looking jack in there. And, uh... You know, they're all, they're drilled for that anyway. That's what they're made to do. The cheaper squires, like the Affinities, have that four-screw kind of plate. They're plastic. They ain't much. Uh, so I have one that's broke. It's been broke for years. I'm still playing the guitar. But, you know, eventually I may put one of these in mind too. Okay, guys, thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you real soon. Be good. Okie doke.